Our next speaker is Shri Ved Prakash Dudeja, Vice Chairman, RLDA. A well-known name in Indian Railways, a civil engineer par excellence, an upright officer and a true leader, Ved Prakash Dudeja is a graduate in civil engineering and also a postgraduate in structures from prestigious Punjab Engineering College, Chandigarh, the college which produced greats like Kalpana Chawla, Jaspal Bhatti, etc. Mr. Dudeja, in his illustrious career of 33 years in Indian Railways, has played a key role in commissioning of over 700 kilometers of railway lines, including some of the most difficult new lines like Jammu Udhampur Rail Link, Gorge Conversi Conversions, Doublings, and Blastel's Track of Delhi Metro. Let's welcome Shri Ved Prakash Dudeja, Vice Chairman, RLDA, on stage. Namaskar. Uh, I will, before I start the discussion on station development, I will brief you about what RLDA is because many of you may not be knowing what RLDA is and what we are doing. So basically, Rail and Development Authority, it is a statutory authority uh, which was formed in 2007 as a result of uh, amendment to Indian Railways Act 2005 and we have been functioning since January 2007. Uh, initial few years took, took us uh, for documentation and you know, a lot of rules are to be uh, framed when authority comes in. So, uh, but action started sometime about three, four years back uh, when we uh, really started monetizing our land parcels, in fact, uh, presently, we have got uh, Pan India presence. Uh, we have got our regional offices uh, across the country in most of the major towns of the country with our headquarters in Delhi. Uh, basically, the, the surplus land whatever is available with Indian Railways, uh, which is not required in near future for the railways use, that is offered to us for monetization. And we have the mandate to monetize this land. As you know, uh, railways have got most precious uh, land in almost all the cities of, of our country and all the major towns. We have got major presence in the form of uh, uh, stations as well as in the form of colonies. So we have been mandated to uh, not only giving land on long lease, but also to redevelop the colonies which are spread over large tracts uh, in the heart of the town, uh, our land is centrally located and we have got captive footfalls being very near to the stations. Then station development projects which we are handling, it has been given infrastructure uh, status. So uh, we don't need to go for an environment clearance uh, from Ministry of Environment. Our Ministry of Railways has been empowered to give environment clearance also. We have to provide them environment uh, management plan. So uh, that is internal process. So we don't have need any external process for development of any station across the country. As of now, we have got uh, 125 commercial sites, uh, which are greenfield land parcels. Uh, and we have already awarded 30 of them to different developers for their whatever use uh, market accepts, they are free to develop those land parcels. Then we have been given some 84 railway colonies for redevelopment, uh, where we utilize the surplus FAR available in all the colonies, and we convert them into high-rise uh, apartments, and surplus FAR is given, offered along with the land to the developer for monetization, uh, wherein he constructs our houses as well as uh, gives some premium also over and above. Basic purpose is not only to redevelop the colonies, but also to earn something out of the surplus FAR available in the colonies. Then there is a model which is very attractive for small investors. We have got uh, multifunctional complexes where we offer them uh, land parcels of very small uh, uh, quantity. Means it, it may range from anything from 500 square meter to 5000 square meter which is very near to the railway station in the circulating area, uh, where the developers are uh, constructing uh, shopping complexes as well as some budget hotels, 
which can be used by the railway passengers as well as uh, by the city people. Then uh, recently in 2019, we have been given some 112 stations for redevelopment. Uh, we are uh, we have done the techno economic feasibility of uh, uh, most of these stations. Uh, out of 112, about 54 stations where concept plans have already been frozen. Uh, and uh, we have already invited tenders for 14 stations across the country EPC on EPC basis. New Delhi, CSMT, uh, these are the flagship stations which RLDA will be doing. We have already uh, prepared our documents and sent to, uh, sent to the ministry and uh, we are expecting approval any time now. In fact, initially these stations were being, uh, means, uh, they were thought of being done under PPP mode uh, by clubbing railway land and some user charges and other things. Uh, but of late, uh, it was felt that station and real estate, there are totally two different kind of components and bundling them together may have difficulties and we were getting that feedback from the market that bundling these two components will be difficult. So now it has been decided that we will be developing most of the stations on APC basis and the real estate will be developed separately. So we have unbundled these two things and now uh, as stations are being developed on APC basis, so uh, the development risk uh, has gone from the, from the developer. It has been taken by the government. And now it's only a construction risk. Uh, of course, challenge will be there. They are brownfield projects. Uh, stations, all stations are brownfield projects. And uh, working very near to the, the running trains. And a lot of services are expected underground very near to the construction area. So these challenges are there, but uh, apart from them, uh, all other risks have been taken by uh, the government. Uh, even we'll, we are providing PVC clause also in the, in the contracts, in EPC contracts, so that even the inflation part is taken care of during construction. Other than this, we have uh, been given some four hill railways for monetization. Uh, we are working on their models, how they can be offered to the uh, private players. We have been given some 18 railway uh, stadiums in the uh, various cities. So there also we are still working on that. Where the, the aim is to provide uh, world-class amenities, not only to railway people, but also to the, the, the uh, city uh, public, uh, of course, on some price. We are working on its uh, model. Uh, Mathura Vrindavan mass transit system, it was given to us for only a kind of pre-feasibility study. And maybe very soon we will be coming out for DPR of this also. And then land parcels in, uh, in Bangalore, they have been given for monetization, uh, which, are, which will be used for funding of suburban uh, rail traffic uh, in the Bangalore city. So about station development, uh, as you know, the, the idea of station development is to provide a congestion-free and uh, world-class experience to the passengers. Uh, now the concept is not only to provide a, a, a world-class amenities to the passengers, but also it should act like a, like a city center. So we will be providing roof plaza on all the stations uh, where the uh, people from the city can also approach that area. We encourage the footfalls in that area. Uh, we'll be providing adequate uh, parking facilities there. And uh, apart from the station development, we are master planning the entire area of that uh, station uh, premises, which will be developed into a commercial hub. So uh, like New Delhi, we are I will be uh, discussing in more details. I have got some 10, 12 slides on New Delhi only. So uh, where we are developing uh, the surrounding area in under national TOD policy. Then uh, traditionally the, the stations uh, have been constructed. They were initially outside the towns and one part of the city was only serv being served by a station. So with time, the city has developed on both sides of the station and stations as of now, 
they are acting like barrier between the two parts of the city they are dividing the city into two different parts and many at many places you might have seen even the real estate prices on one side of the station are much higher as compared to the other side so purpose of this development is to integrate both side of the station so that we essentially we provide at least a second entry on the other side also so that people can not only cross the station they can uh, uh, they can catch trains from both the side of the station so integration of uh, both side of the town is an important aspect of our station development then we are we will be providing all retail uh, over the station uh, for the passengers for the public Uh, recently, Government of India has sanctioned two umbrella works uh, for station development to be done under APC, costing 175 billion rupees, Indian rupees. And for New Delhi and Mumbai, a uh, grant of 25 billion rupees have been sanctioned. But as I told you, we, we will be going there also in APC. We have already submitted our documents for APC. So entire funding will be done by Government of India for New Delhi as well as for Mumbai. Uh, we have already uh, finalized concept plans for 55 stations. And APC tenders for three, te three stations are already awarded and work is in progress, like in Gomti Nagar, Sabdarjang, and Bijwasan. Work is already in progress. Uh, in addition to that, uh, tenders for 14 stations, this is slightly older version of my presentation, 14 stations tender has already been, have already been invited. Uh, tenders for two stations, uh, Gaya as well as Tirupati have been opened and they are going to be finalized within a week or so. So action will start very soon on both the stations. I am being reminded that my time is up. So I'll, I'll just take another two or three minutes. I will uh, just rush up. Uh, this is about New Delhi Railway Station, so I will not uh, uh, speak much on this. This is the uh, location where we are developing New Delhi Station, right next to Connaught Place. And the idea is to decongest Connaught Place, not to congest, rather to decongest it by providing elevated uh, road network uh, just by the side of the station, all, along, all around the station. I think this is all self-explanatory. So this is the first uh, station which is being taken under national TOD policy with FAR of 3.55. And we will be uh, building up a built up area of 25.4 million square feet. So 11 million square feet will be used for government use and 14 million square feet will be for commercial purposes. So asset worth around 30 to 35,000 crores uh, will be created next to they cannot place. This is, these are some of the pictures of New Delhi when it gets developed. 20% greens is the mandatory requirement for TOD policy. So we are providing 20.8% greens in this area. So I'll, I'll rush up. I think uh, this is high street. State entry road will be converted into high street. So it will be 650 meter long street where we'll have high-end showrooms all along this, and it will be pedestrian-friendly. There will be no motorized vehicle allowed on this road. So it will connect Connaught Place with New Delhi Station. Uh, this is concourse. Uh, it's about 60,000 square meter area, about 15 acre plate will be created over the railway tracks, over the platforms. At, uh, at level two, we are providing free access to the people to cross the station. And uh, along that corridor, this green corridor, we'll have uh, retail also, where people can go and just shop and go back. At the higher levels, we have provided business centers where people can just come from different directions, have their business meetings, and go back. This is internal views. These are some of the stations which we have planned. I'll just click out Delhi Kent, Randakulam Junction. Surat, Charbagh, Lucknow, Nellore, Pondicherry, Kanpur, Kolam, Bijwasan. It's already in progress. Ludhiana. Thank you very much.
IRSDC was uh, basically subsidiary of RLD and Aircon. It was given a specific function of in, uh, station development, but the mandate was very limited. So government decided the RLD is having full mandate of all everything, station development as well as commercial development. So why to keep two? Why not to shut down one? So it's a, it's a strategic decision by government. Thank you so much, sir, and we are so excited to see the upcoming projects. So with this, now I request Mr. Shri Shantanu Roy, Executive Director, BEML, to please join us on stage to present the memento to Shri Ved Prakash. Thank you so much, sir.